do you make of uh, the performance of the NSC 20 losing a few points, 8.9 points? But, you know, we still need to comment that it's above the 4,000 resistance level at least. Um, I, I guess people need to now reach a point where we can revise the resistance level. Because 4,000 used to be the resistance level when we were playing around the 4,600, 4,700 mark. Now that we went down below the 4,000 mark, 4,017 points, really, I think we are still not out of the woods yet. And um, with, with most guys who bought below the 4,000 mark, I think now we'll play around that area as guys will be making their 5%, 6% profit taking. What continues to influence the markets? First, it was Kenya's proximity to North Africa and how tea exports to Egypt had affected uh, the shilling. Then it was issues around the rising oil price and inflation creeping in. It was issues around stability of the Grand Coalition. What's, what's happening now? It, it's still the same factors uh, affecting the Nairobi Stock Exchange. Um, you, you find now instead of um, not having a market to sell the tea, there is a drought which has made tea production come down. Um, as we know that uh, tea grows even with the slightest bit of rain, uh, the production goes up. So production of tea is down. Um, oil prices are still high and pump prices in Kenya have just been revised upwards and um, they are now above the 100 shilling mark. So again that has an impact on, on, on the investor and the investor's perception. And, and we still have the political stalemate on, on the ICC deferral cases. Uh, half the government wants it, half the government does not want it. So there are still factors that, that are affecting how the market is operating. And uh, a depreciating shilling is also not conducive for investors who are coming into the market because if they want to go out in a shilling that keeps on losing value, then they, they have to get more, higher returns than what they would normally get if the shilling was strengthening. Let's talk about how the markets perform today and the stocks to watch. We have seen in today's session Safaricom at least touching a high of four shillings and 25 cents. Safaricom has really borne the brunt of a lot of competition and regulatory issues in recent days. Are investors still flocking into the Safaricom counter? Uh, Safaricom is a, is a counter which is normally favored by, by foreign investors and you find out when it went down to 3 shillings 80 cents, 3 shillings 70 cents, uh, most of the people that were doing the buying on its way down were foreigners and currently even most of the demand on the counter is still from, from foreigners. Yes, they've gotten a beating from their competitors but they're still the market leader, they still have the largest number of subscribers and it will be like that for some time. Um, wh what we now need to watch out is one for the results to see the actual impact on their voice revenue which is still close to 70% of their revenues. Then with this number portability which is supposed to start on the 1st of April, well, how, how is the market going to react to such news? Other stocks within the sort of the ICT services space, Access Kenya losing about 30 cents, is that significant? Uh, Access Kenya, I guess, they're also suffering from stiff competition. They're just like Safaricom. They, they used to have uh, the market leadership. Now the telecoms are also going into the same industry and same market that Access Kenya are in. But the difference now with Access Kenya and the telecoms is that the telecoms have the customer already. It, it's easier to sell to a Safaricom subscriber. Safaricom can sell to their subscriber. And uh, 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 the subscriber can easily pick a call from Safaricom than picking a call from Access Kenya or, or something of that nature. So they, they are facing stiff competition. And it will continue to affect them. Let's talk about what's happening amongst the financials. I mean, today we've seen about 7.6 million shares traded within this sector, which accounts for about 37% of the market's activity today. We've seen very good results coming out of Kenya. We're seeing good dividends being paid out, but we're seeing some of the shares trading at a significant premium, and that's a concern. Um, the, the financial sector, I, I guess there's that aspect of thinking that the ready share price is already factored in the good results. Because it's a bit easy to interpolate from the third quarter results, so people must have priced in already um, the, the good results that were going to be announced. And that's why when the results were announced, most of the counters didn't move at all. Some actually even dropped, even announcing record dividends. So that, that factor and aspect of people already having priced in, thinking that the banking sector is going to have good results. So people went into the banking sector early part of January, late part of December, and the prices did go up. So when the results came in, uh, most people started just starting to move out of the counter as dividend closed, like what we see with Barclays today. Uh, I think their books closure was yesterday, and the counter dropped about 10.7% today, even I mean, more than what it's supposed to correct. Uh, talking about those dividends, Pan-African Insurance Holdings is up 24% today. Day. 
they've issued their first and final dividend at about three shillings and a bonus uh, ratio of one to one. What do you make of that? The results were good. Um, the, the, the results actually did jump. Well, um, it, at least it's, it was expected to get a 24% increase after uh, close to 200-300% increase in profits. Uh, the dividend is still not up there in the parking order. It's still lower. But I think the highest dividend pair is having a dividend yield of around 6%, which is, I think, KCB and Barclays. Um, then you have your British America Tobacco, your BOC, and your Cabasi that have actually high dividend paying. Counter. So three shillings uh, based on the price, it's not a high dividend. Very briefly, in 30 seconds, your views on the fixed income market. We're told that uh, the CBK will be reopening its 30-year bond. Well, the fixed income market is the best place to be. Uh, the government, there's a ballooning budget deficit. They need to borrow money domestically. Rates are going up. Inflations are going up. So it, it's a matter of which paper to buy at what time, when to offload it. Because if you're held with the paper, when the interest rates go up, uh, you will suffer a loss.